Hi guys, so I have this Chevy Volt charger and I'm having some issues. So what happened was, um, as you can see, the main plug kind of deteriorated from this side. And I don't know why, but it just started to melt through and uh, the wires got exposed. And so I cut the front and <clears throat> I think I'm gonna just have to replace this. So what I did was I ended up getting one of these cables. Uh, these are high amp cable and this is from a uh, uh, dishwasher. So I know the gauge is good. So make sure you are using a similar gauge as the one that is being used in the current one to support the amp rating. And uh, this particular one is the, it's almost the same, same gauge. So there you go. So uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, pop this side. So this is the only way you can open it. Um, kind of like pry it up. Um, so what I did was I took a uh, flathead screwdriver and uh, just kind of going in and prying it and I just took a piece of plastic and kind of hold it underneath. So I'm just going to take this and just keep sliding it all the way through, all the way through and this should pop up. Keep lifting it like a lever. The reason I'm using this, this is just a um, a piece from the uh, closet uh, uh, shelf. This is the one that's folded, so I'm just using that. And the side is all loose. You can do the same thing on this side. I think it's just stick together with some kind of glue and there you go you can see this thing is exposed and it was just a minor glue uh, so once you're putting it back together we can just glue it together so now I'm just going to take this I'm just going to take this and uh, you can see inside there's a there's this uh, plastic tab which you can just pretty much remove it by hand and it just comes right off. So now this front piece is off and uh, this wire kind of goes back on the back of the board. So this is the wire that is coming out and you can see it's a lot of corrosion, a lot of, uh, and I'm not really corrosion, but kind of cracks and things like that. So I'm not sure what caused it, but uh, I'm going to unscrew these and just take this whole thing and replace that entire wire. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew, the, there are two screws and uh, there's a tie wrap which you can cut. This tie wrap is pretty much holding that, uh, this wire. So I'm going to unscrew these, get the tie wrap out of the way. And let's see. Okay, so the tie wrap is out. There's another one that is holding the wires together. Okay, so this one is also out. And uh, there you go. As you can see, Good. This is really weird. I'm not sure how this happened. So now I'm, I need a screwdriver, a Phillips screw, and this is this looks like a smaller head screw. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove those two screws. Okay, so these two screws came out, and I lifted this guy, and I removed the old damaged wire from here. And this thing, I think, is just a crimp onto that wire. So I just pulled it out from the backside. 
and uh, what were you gonna do? And then I, <clears throat> I cut this. So now I have these three wires <clears throat> that is just going to that main board. And these are the same wire that are connected, the were connected to the old wire. So what I did was I just kind of stripped it back. Yeah. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, connect the green wire to the green, which is the ground. And the ground just kind of goes right here. And then these two doesn't really matter which one goes where. So we're just gonna connect one wire to, to this guy. And the other one will go onto this one. Uh, now before I do that, I'm not sh exactly sure if this is a fuse or what exactly this is. To uh, So to make sure this part is good, uh, you can uh, either try to buzz from here to here uh, to make sure you have continuity or you can buzz across and see if you have any kind of impedance across these two wires because if you read something that means uh, it's not an open circuit, it's closed. So that will give you a good indication. Also, it will give you a good indication that the crimp over here is good as well. So th this is a test that you definitely want to do before you connect everything because if, um, th if this is open from inside, you know, you it's not going to work for you. And uh, <clears throat> it's highly unlikely that something over here is damaged because it's pretty, it's pretty well put together. You know, there's a lot of glue holding this together and things like that. So uh, most likely your issue is going to be here somewhere. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to do my test and then I'm going to start connecting the new wire. I'm going to feed it from the bottom up and uh, put this cover back on, make sure it's seated, seated properly. And then I'm just going to tie this together. All right. So <clears throat> before I put everything together, uh, there's one test that I wanted to do. So one of the things that I did was I did a buzzing test, um, basically touching these two wires would create this sound. And uh, what I did was I connected one uh, probe right here and the other I tried to like pinch it into this wire, you know, uh, trying to listen to that buzz, but I'm not hearing anything. Uh, I tried multiple times, you know, I'm just not sure if I'm getting a good connection. I don't want to uh, start cutting the wire, you know, because uh, I don't want to mess that, but mess that up, you know. So uh, since I can't really uh, test using a meter and I'm not too confident with the test that I'm performing. Uh, what I decided to do was connect the wires directly and see if I see my lights come on on this guy. <clears throat> so all I did was I connected the the cable from this guy to this so I can see my lights uh, if I have power and I connected these two to the, ma the main one, excuse me, and uh, the ground to the ground. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug this in. I have an extension cord <clears throat> for safety that I want to, I'm going to plug it in from there so I can see it in case if I have something wrong or some kind of short, I'm not any, anywhere close to it. So uh, safety first, guys, you know, make sure you do this when no kids are around and you know what you're doing. You definitely want, don't want to get hurt <clears throat> while doing this. So uh, with, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set everything up and power it up and see what happens. Okay, so I'm far away from this thing and I can just switch on the power from here and see if my light, co light comes on. And over here, I don't see any light. So it seems like my test was right. That uh, device, that black device, something is not right with that thing. And uh, it's probably shorted from inside or short open. Okay, so I couldn't find um, anything with the uh, QS-2 online, so I decided to cut it open and guess what's in there? Uh, looks like a fuse. So our guesstimate was good that it is a fuse and most likely this is uh, just blown. And I just have to get the information from top of this. And it uh, seems like there is a cover on this so that we can pull it out and Maybe replace it's a 20 amp. It's a 20 amp fuse, looks like. Yeah, it's a 20 and 500 volts. So we're gonna pull this out and try to find this. So to test this fuse, we're gonna just put it on one side. Put your meter in impedance ohms, and then. Uh, Touch it, I don't see anything, and touch the other side just to make sure your meter is good. 0.1 ohms on the other side, and now I measure across the resistor. 
and I'm not seeing any reading. So that tells me the fuse is definitely blown. So uh, we definitely need a new fuse. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and find a new fuse and just wire this together with that. And that should bring our charger back to life. So guys, uh, that is uh, pretty much what you need to replace on this guy. So I'm probably going to have to find this fuse and replace it. Uh, but meanwhile, I already have another charger, so I'm not in a rush. Um, but uh, so I won't be able to record how to replace that entire thing, you know. I'm sure if you got this far, you know how to put a fuse back in. Uh, this fuse seems like, uh, like, you know, mine broke since I was uh, <clears throat> messing around with it, but it seems like there's a jacket that you can just pull off this fuse. I'm not sure how easy or hard it's gonna be. It's not that easy though. Um, hopefully I find something that's already soldered together so I don't have to worry about this because this is not something that you can solder at home. This is heavy stuff um, or it may have to be crimped. But either way, um, uh, you definitely don't want to bypass this, you know, that's a critical piece. So that's what probably most likely saved my board. Um, and you can do some testing. You, you can apply direct power and make sure your board comes on, you know, that will give you a good indication that the board is good uh, before you order your fuse, you know. Uh, but that is it, guys, pretty much for this video. So when you replace this fuse, uh, your board should be good to go. So, guys, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you.